Hello everyone, Storm11 here. Today we'll be talking about a storm system that will be growing into parts of the mid Mississippi Valley that will bring in three different threat, or threats. One threat will be severe weather across parts of most of Missouri, even into parts of northern Arkansas, eastern Oklahoma, southwestern Illinois, even into parts of western Kentucky and northwestern Tennessee. We also have the threat force of flash flooding across parts of southeastern Iowa, northeastern Missouri, northern Illinois, northern Indiana, and also northern Ohio. And number three will be high winds across parts of the lower Ohio Valley region where wind gusts could approach 40 to 45 miles per hour. So we're going to get started with the severe weather side of things. So here's today we got that slack risk that's been expanded. But what do we further to the east? So now this includes northeastern Kansas southeastern Nebraska, far southwestern Iowa, and then into parts of northern Missouri. We're not expecting any tornadoes today. They dropped at 2%. There is a low-end wind risk, mainly focused in Kansas, Oklahoma, and northeastern Texas, but the main threat will be hail. Um, since we got that pretty cold air aloft up there, some of those sources could easily produce some hail out there as well. But day two, which is Sunday, this is the big day. Uh, we got we still have that enhanced risk for severe weather across most of Missouri, southwestern Illinois, northwestern Arkansas, and far northeastern Oklahoma as well. We also have a march of risk across far western Oregon, which the main threat of that would actually be hail. But one of the main threats down um, one of the main threats for the severe weather setup will be tornadoes, which some of those could be strong tornadoes which we're talking about EF2 or possibly higher than that with the intensity we can also see the potential for significant damage to winds as well though the wind dynamics up there could certainly support some damage to winds for so many storms as well which then again some of it could be significant we also could see some hail as well not really expecting much away a very large hail at this point here but there could certainly be some hail producers out there as well and here's day three, that same system continues to move on to the east here, it brings in a risk of severe weather across parts of eastern Kentucky, Tennessee, northern Georgia, parts of the Carolinas, most of West Virginia, and also Virginia as well, in far southeastern Ohio. It's look at, the main threat's looking to be damaged winds, but we can also cannot roll out maybe some isolated tornadoes as well. We still got some wind shear to work with out there as well. I'm still not expecting enhanced up enhanced risk upgrade out there as well here's day four we got the slack risk across parts of texas oklahoma kansas and nebraska uh day five recently shrinking a little bit that 15 percent slack risk uh mainly focused in southeastern louisiana southern mississippi southern alabama and parts of the western panhandle of florida as well so it's definitely gonna be a pretty active time period severe weather but today we're gonna be mainly focused on Sunday. So let's get started with the HER models, which is now in range. So we'll kind of go through the rest of today. We got a cluster of showers and thunderstorms rolling through parts of southern Missouri. Some of those may sneak into parts of the lower Ohio Valley region. Then you start to see new storms form. Now, this is your warm front up here, and this will continue to move on to the north here. And eventually, it's going to stall out in its general area right in there. And those are the areas that need to be focused on with that potential flash flooding threat, especially when it starts to saw out. And then as we kind of get into Sunday morning here, your warm front kind of extends into parts of northern Kentucky with some rounds of showers and thunderstorms. Not expecting a flash flood threat down there, but eventually on the western side or the left side of your screen, you'll start to see a low that will kind of move into parts of Kansas and Missouri at the same time. And then you kind of see this warm front starts to move a little bit further up to the north as well. It's kind of interesting to show some stronger storms in northern Kentucky. That might be a, an outlier. And then, bam, you start to see here's your cold front right here. And your low is right here. Kind of over southwestern Iowa, northwestern Missouri, and southeastern Nebraska area. And you got storms that are forming along that cold front. Here's a warm front up here with some of those areas experiencing waves of showers and thunderstorms. These are the storms we need to pay attention to. It's not the ones along the squall line here, which may be a broken line of storms, but it's these cells out ahead of it 
These are the cells that could produce large hail, damage winds, and also the chance for strong tornadoes. Now, for the ones that's along the squall line, the main threats could be damage and wind. Some of it could be significant, but we can still not roll out QLCS tornadoes along that front. That's definitely a possibility as well, which that does extend to parts of southeastern Oklahoma as well, and also for northwestern Arkansas. You'll kind of see it continue to move on to the east. It does look like some of those supercells may be a little bit on the short-lived side of things, which is good news there. And you then, into the overnight hours, you start to see this uh, line of storms continue to move on to the east here. Still got possibly some stronger uh, storms, maybe still on the, along that squall line. I believe the windshield would definitely help kind of keep these storms up a little bit. And about tomorrow morning, your cluster thunderstorms will now reach into parts of central Kentucky and even to parts of western Ohio as well. And possibly that same cluster storms may try to... to Gain some strength with that, some of that sunshine that starts to pop out, and then that threat kind of moves into parts of the Appalachian Mountains later in the day. So let's talk about the, uh, well, actually, we'll check out the high-risk NAM, but while we check out the high-risk NAM, I want to go ahead into uh, Supercell Composite. So let's check out the high-risk NAM solution, and then again, a cluster of showers, the third storms kind of roll through. Then you got that warm front. And then as we kind of get into getting closer to the evening hours, you do see those cluster thunderstorms start to develop along that front there. And then the ones out ahead of the front are the ones we need to pay attention, pay attention to for that potential for some supercells out there as well. These will continue to move on to the east. And when they start to kind of cluster up, that's when that damage wind threat starts to increase as well, especially when we get later into the night. And then by tomorrow morning, that cluster of thunderstorms kind of move into parts of Kentucky and Tennessee. And it'll start to try, at least try to redevelop a little bit. There is some cells out in the Carolinas that we may need to pay attention to as well. Some of those may try to be super cells. But the cold front is still back here though. And along that cold front, if we could get some instability involved and some sunshine, new storms could form behind that front or actually just along the front as well later in the day so there's still some uncertainty with uh monday setup here at this time so let's check out the super set composite going back to the her model here we'll be going back and forth between these two models here so here's your super set composite and again this is really the combination of wind shear and instability and you see here some of the highest numbers are focused in missouri and even to parts of southern illinois as well we'll get a couple soundings out there as well just out ahead of the cold front you do see here that we got a lot of wind shear to work with there is some instability out there as well to support that threat we also got some pretty good lap rates too which could support that hail threat a little bit of a mixed layer in the mid levels there Pretty good holograph. And again, a decent amount of wind shear to work with. Wind direction of height here. There is a slight cap towards the surface there. That may be a little bit of a limiting factor to the severe weather potential. Is that little cap down there in the surface. But with some of the lap rates though, I think it could, some of those sources could maybe blow for that weak cap. But then again, that cap is on the weaker side of things. As we continue to move on a little further to the east, the instability kind of backs off, but the wind shear does increase. And the environment is still favorable for severe weather. Pretty much all hazards. Large hail, damage winds, and also for tornadoes. So some of those could be significant. Just give it about how much wind shear that's going to be out there could definitely support that uh, strong tornado threat out there as well. Plus that wind direction of height as well. Then again, some instability. Lap rates in the mid-levels are pretty good. Uh, and we also have that hodograph, which is also going to be favorable for uh, tornadoes as well. Also pretty favorable for some pretty good supercells. And then, of course, we kind of get later to the night here. Some of these numbers here do back off. And it looks like some of those numbers do kind of go up a little bit as you get into parts of Arkansas. Here's southeastern Oklahoma. Kind of similar situation here. Maybe not as high for that tornado threat. Since as we looked into the assimilation reflectivity, it kind of looks to be more linear. So the tornado, at least the strong tornado threats kind of backed off a little bit, but there's still a lot of wind shear to work with, which will be favorable for 
tornadoes as well. And then you kind of get into central Arkansas. We do see it's also favorable for all hazards as well. So generally, most of Missouri, southwestern Illinois, central and northern Arkansas, even to parts of eastern Oklahoma as well, be the areas to pay attention to for that potential for some uh, significant severe weather as well. Let's see, which one should we do next here? I have to check out here. I don't think there's not much of anything else here. Um, we'll check out the story to Felicity there. There'll be another way to look at to wind shear, but as we check out the high risk dam here, you can see here, show some of those higher numbers down at Arkansas there. A little bit difference there between the her and the high risk dam here, but we'll get some soundings out there. But either way, both of them still shows a pretty favorable environment for severe weather for all hazards. Probably a little bit overkill with the cape there with the higher stamp typically does that. Uh, pretty good holograph, will be, which will be favorable. Wind direction of high, plenty of wind shear. Not as high with the uh, lap rates as the HER model, but it can still be favorable for some hail out there as well. And plus that Elvin mix layer that's there as well. So this will be a pretty favorable environment here. For all hazards as well. Just by looking at sounding. We'll go to southern Missouri. See what's down here. A little bit higher on the wind shear. As we kind of get a little further south. With the story to Felicity numbers. Between 300 to 450 range. Uh, light braids will be favorable for some hail. Downdraft cape will be favorable for damaged winds as well. Special if this elephant mix layer towards the surface will also be favorable for some damage and winds as well, which some of it could be significant. We also got a pretty good holograph as well. So this will be another favorable sounding for significant severe weather of all hazards. Uh, maybe not so much for the hail. And then we kind of get to parts of central Arkansas. Shows a pretty similar solution here. It's but I do think it's a little bit of an overkill with the cape. I think the cape will generally be probably 1,300 to maybe 2,000 at best. But that's still favorable for severe weather as well. But of course, when you kind of get a little further south, the cape is a little bit higher. So I think areas a little further south may get to see some areas that could get a little over 2,000 joules per kilogram of cape. And really everything else here is really there. It's not a whole lot missing when it comes to severe weather with these soundings here. So it probably will have to depend on top of storm mode here. As well, you, you've seen the high risk NAM kind of shows a little bit more of a linear event. If so, then you're probably only talking about damage to winds and, and just tornadoes in general. Maybe not really the strong ones, but any storm that forms out ahead of front again, has a good chance of becoming a supercell, and it could be a little bit more of a significant storm than the storms along the squall line, or along the front, I should say. So let's check out that story to Felicity there. And this is one way to kind of check out how much wind shear is going to be out there. And you do see here, there's not a whole lot of a little bit earlier in the day, but that's just pretty typical there. But generally, you just really only need 150 but the story to Felicity, you'd be good to go with severe weather. You do see here, as expected here, when you get into the overnight hours, that wind shear does start to increase here. And you're talking about a lot of wind shear out there. Definitely pretty supportive for uh, severe weather. Especially when you kind of get into the morning hours of Monday. Check out all that wind shear that's out there. Quite a bit of wind shear. Out there, but the limiting factor would be instability. However, there will be some vorticity out there, which is energy. So some of those sorts can still keep on going into the overnight hours. So we could still cannot roll out maybe a couple strong storms in the early morning hours of Monday, or just say late Sunday, near as well. But they will not be as bad as areas out here, though. Just to keep in mind of that. And as we check out the Harris Dam for the story to Felicity, you do see here the numbers are actually a little bit higher here than the uh, her model. But still, either way, there's a lot of wind shear out there that will definitely be supported for severe weather. And you can see how that continues to move on to the east. And then as you kind of get to the evening hours, that wind shear starts to increase in the Carolinas. 
as well even to parts of West Virginia as well with quite a bit of wind shear out there as well. Let's see, talk about the upper level wind dynamics. We'll check out the higher sedan for that one. We'll check out the low level jet here, which is at 850 millibars. So we kind of get through the day on Sunday. You can see here, the low level jet is expected to be pretty strong uh, throughout Sunday here, even to the overnight hours, which typically in the overnight hours, the low level jet is usually pretty strong overnight. I mean, check out these winds here. You're talking about winds up to 70 miles per hour with that low level jet, and that's definitely favorable for severe weather out there. And then again, as you kind of get to 3 o'clock in the morning, along that line there, you're talking about wind gusts up to or sustained winds up to 86 miles per hour along that line. That's where kind of that significant wind risk kind of comes into play here. It's with some of those storms here that kind of interacts with this little of a jet. Sometimes some of those winds there can get down to the surface here. Sometimes those storms with those down drafts can bring them down to the surface. That's where that significant wind threat kind of comes into play here. Even early on the day as well, you can still see some significant wind gusts as well. And then you kind of see how it continues to move on to parts of Ohio, Kentucky, and then into parts of Tennessee into the early morning hours. And the level of jet is not as great as you kind of get into Monday here. Uh, because of that low pressure system, it won't be as strong. But check out these wind gusts here at the surface here. This kind of goes to the other thread, which will be high winds across parts of Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Ohio. We'll kind of back it to 12 o'clock here. You can see here, this is not thunderstorm winds. This is actually winds coming out from the south and southwest. And you got wind gusts of approaching 50 miles per hour. Now, I do think that's a little bit higher end on the scale here. I think we're going to be talking more like 30 to 40 miles per hour than 50. But I, will, but I will say there will be some isolated areas that can see 40 to 45 miles per hour. That's def, that definitely cannot be ruled out. But either way, we're still going to see some strong winds and possibly some wind damage out there just from these winds as well, at least mainly for tree damage. And as you kind of get to every morning hours, those winds kind of shift a little bit further to the east. If you check out the GFS model, which has so far been the most accurate model here when it comes to wind gusts, it's a little bit lower than Harris Nam, but it still shows some those pretty strong wind gusts out there as well, getting close to 45 miles per hour. But then again, I think we're generally talking about 30 to 40 miles per hour here. But either way, those winds can be strong enough to do some tree damage out there as well. And there may be a chance for a very isolated power outage, outages as well. So that's definitely something you need to pay attention to as well. European Mall is usually the one that's a little bit uh, too high when it comes to wind gusts, but this time here, it's actually not that high actually agrees on with the GFS a little bit, but the European model is a little bit slower as well, which is pretty interesting. But right now, I'm kind of following along with the GFS solution with those high winds as well. If you check out that load of a jet again, you can see there, it's pretty strong out there, especially when you get to the overnight hours. I mean, check that load of a jet across Indiana and Kentucky. Man, wind winds up to 75 miles per hour. That's a pretty strong load of a jet here. We'll check out a 500 millibars here. You can definitely see here with this big trough that could quickly moves to the east here. And eventually as you move on to later day on Monday, then the severe weather threat is focused further to the east. I'll say be mainly focused across parts of the Carolinas, Virginia, maybe into parts of Maryland and Delaware. As well, I think those are the areas we should probably be focused on for severe weather on Monday. If you check out the instability underneath that, if we kind of go back, actually it doesn't show a whole lot of cape out there as well, so that could be a limiting factor. If you look to the European mall, it's kind of a similar situation here. There's not a whole lot of instability out there as well, which is pretty interesting as well. So. The severe weather risk may be focused a little bit further east than what the SPC does show, but we'll see what happens there over the next couple more runs. We'll see how the models kind of trend towards uh, for Monday. Um, and then the last threat would be the flash flooding threat. Along the warm front here, if we go to rain and thunder here, 
There will be rounds of showers and thunderstorms across parts of Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio, even to parts of Iowa as well. And these storms here will be trending over to some of the same areas as this low that kind of continues to move on to the east here. And if we check out some of those rainfall totals over the next three days, we do see some of those isolated amounts could approach five inches of rain. But I think it's going to be a general one to three inches of rain, and there'll be some areas that could get three to five inches of rain. I think that's doable, but I think that's more isolated in nature. If you check out the European model, it's a little bit lower in, but still shows quite a bit of rain out there as well. Some areas could see up to four inches. Here's the GFS model here. That shows some areas getting a little over five inches of rain. And there, here's the high-risk NAM, which may be a little bit overdone, but still shows a lot of rain out there, showing some places could see up to 7 inches of rain. So areas across northern Missouri, central Illinois, northern Indiana, northern Ohio, and even to parts of southern Iowa, maybe southern Michigan as well, may need to pay attention on with that flash flooding threat. Really, pretty much most of the day on Sunday into the early morning hours on Monday, at least for areas a little further east. That flash flooding threat will continue in Indiana and Ohio into Monday morning. So really, this low here is gonna, definitely going to cause a lot of problems across the Mid-Mississippi River Valley, even into parts of the Ohio Valley as well, and possibly into parts in the Mid-Atlantic as well on Monday. But anyways, guys, this is all for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Because like this video, hit that like button if you do like my channel. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notifications so you never miss an upload. If you've got some questions about this, put the comment section down below. I'll answer you guys' questions. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.